Hello there. Welcome back to Jenny Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel again today. I have an art journal for you, so get comfy and let's get around. I am working on the mid-month mini mission for the Mission Inspiration Facebook group, October 2022 prompt. That's a mouthful. <laughs> the randomly selected letter was A, and the words for inspiration are abstract, amber, antique, aquatic, and alien. So let's see what I came up with. I am going to make my background page amber colored and I'm going to be using watercolors and watercolor sprays to do that. So my first layer is going to be created with my Gonzai Tombi watercolor palette. Um, this was my very first um, watercolor palette that was not a student grade or a kids grade watercolor palette. And it has fabulous colors. They are so bold and so bright and so pretty. And I have taken this piece of mixed media paper. It is um, about five and a half by eight and a half inches. Really, I should have used watercolor paper because while mixed media paper can take water, it makes the paper very thin. And um, I did have to put some backing on it to keep it from flopping around at the end. So I am picking up um, all the different colors of yellow in my palette. Um, I started with a wide brush. I decided maybe I wanted a round brush. I went back to the wide brush. I am not looking for any kind of um, blend or fade or, um, I, I just want all the colors of yellow on this palette. So I started with dark and then I went to the lightest and I went to the midi. I just use them all and I'm just making sure that the whole background of this page is colored and that it's wet. This is a wet on wet technique. I want these colors to move. I am going to um, heat set them with my heat tool, kind of creating some of those hard edges that, that are created when watercolor pigment accumulates as it's drying. So my next layer is to add some yellows and amber colors with distress sprays and illusion sprays and I think I would have a stain, a distress stain. So the first thing I did after I put my page in my splat box was to get it wet again just a little bit with a water bottle and then I'm adding one color at a time followed by a couple of sprays of water from my distress um, water sprayer thingy, the Tim Holtz one. And I'm not drying in between colors, I'm just kind of I keep knocking my box around. <laughs> I'm just um, spraying some yellow pigment, adding some water, spraying some yellow pigment, adding some water. I'm going from varying heights. Sometimes I'm spraying from really from a lot higher up. Sometimes I'm getting right down there next to the paper, so I have some um, larger concentration of color. Um, I don't intend to leave the splatters. I kind of want to. Um, add more water and then use those to create more of those hard edges as I dry my page back. Um, I did notice it was getting a little bit more yellow than amber and amber is our A word. <laughs> so I am going to add some of those darker colors again. I think I have wild honey, distress spray, um, distra distress spray. <laughs> and then I have a dilutions that is a yellow that's kind of a darker toned yellow. Um, I did pull out my paintbrush and kind of and move those big droplets around in the water puddle on my paper. And again, I am taking my heat tool and I'm lifting up my page to, so that pigment moves around to help create that hard edge. Now, one of the sprays I have is a oxide spray. So you can see how it's got that chalky finish. So my final step in the background is to create that kind of abstract slash aquatic look. Now, this stencil is dirty. I knew it was dirty. I was hoping that I would have some mild transfer and it worked. Now, normally this probably would have given me a full on heart attack, but <laughs> um, I had used this stencil on a non-traditional Christmas card a couple weeks ago, or maybe last week even, and I hadn't washed it yet. I am naughty and do not always wash my stencils right away unless I am using like glimmer paste or texture paste or something. So my hope was that some of the blue ink from this stencil 
would kind of rub off the stencil with that blending brush and the yellow ink I'm using behind it and create the illusion of waves or shadows to waves in this background. And it worked. Now it is a little bit darker in some areas than others, but so are the shadows or the depths of the waves on an ocean. So this is my nod or one of the nods to the aquatic theme or um, inspiration word on our um, prompt card. It's also a little abstract looking. It doesn't necessarily read waves because it's not in blues and greens. So it is, is a little abstract. I also have some amber going on. Now the antique, I didn't quite work into my page this month. I, yeah, it just didn't. <laughs> but I'm going to work on some more of the aquatic and the alien. So I have printed out this funny little um, clip art spaceship and this ridiculous little alien with tentacles because there is my nod to the aquatic. And I want this alien to sit inside the spaceship um, and have his tentacles hanging over the edge. One thing I did not love about this little clip art man is that his mouth is white and open and you can't see his teeth. So I have pulled out, um, gosh, Faber-Castell pen maybe? I just grabbed the first black pen that was in my drawer that was not a fine nib. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to color in his mouth around his teeth so that you can see that he does have a couple of teeth there in his mouth. And the next thing I'm going to do is try and position him with the tentacles hanging over the outside edge of the spaceship. As you can see, there is no bubble or hatch to the top of this spaceship because in order to make this monster um, small enough to fit, it made him a little too hard to see. So the next issue I'm coming up with is that his tentacles don't really want to hang over the hatch or hang over the spaceship. So I'm going to cut them off and then re-adhere them. So a little bit of alien slash sea monster surgery going on here. I am going to cut off all but one of the largest tentacle that's a little higher up because it's a little more manipulatable, if that's the right word. And I'm going to just reposition them and at the end, I think I put them back on in the wrong order, but whatever, it worked. <laughs> He's not complaining. All of his tentacles are there. So this is kind of what I want him to look like. I wanted the tentacles to be kind of outside the edge of that spaceship. So we have a little bit of a nod to the alien, a little nod to the aquatic theme. And now it's just a matter of assembling him and putting it all together. I am going to be using my Tombow Mono Glue and my Reverse Clamp Tweezers for this part. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to the body of the bottom of the body of this alien and slip him right there behind the spaceship. And hopefully my fingers don't stick to the page because you know that's always my problem. I get glue all over my fingers. Now I think it would have been better to cut this guy on a cardstock or to print him rather on a cardstock as opposed to a copy paper. Um, I think I need to look into some lightweight cardstock, like maybe a, a 60 pound cardstock or 60 pound printer paper um, for when I'm printing out these um, vocal images for my art journal pages. Because when you get into the little tiny spaces like around his eyes and the little stems to his eyes, it was very fidgety and I dang near cut off his eyeballs. So on my next trip to the grocery or office or craft store, I will be looking for some printer paper that is a little bit heavier weight. I used a 24 pound and that's just not quite um, heavy enough sometimes I think. All right, so now that I have him situated, I have begun to reattach his tentacles. Um, didn't know I was a um, alien surgeon, but apparently that is a skill I can now say I have um, mastered. <laughs> All of his tentacles line up on his body, and he does not look sad about how they went back on. I'm just saying. I have a very satisfied customer here. <laughs> um, I honestly was unsure of how to go about this page. Um, as you probably have heard me say before, I really like to use at least one of the prompt words or inspiration words that Mike gives with his mid-month mission prompts. Um, if I think I can, I like to get them all in there. And I really wasn't, like, I looked for pictures of, of um, antique aliens or antique um, sea creatures, and they're all dark and scary and gloomy, and um, they, they didn't really translate well to 
a cheeky little art journal page, you know, my, my, my art journal tends to be probably more cheeky than, um, than serious, <laughs> especially when I'm creating collages, right? So it, it did become a little bit of a, what do I want to do with this? Um, I did know I wanted the, the background to be amber colored. So that was, you know, I had to find focal images that were not yellow or amber colored so that they would stand up off of the background. Um, but I do think that this little alien is cute. Now I have a chipboard A that I have pulled out of my stash. I'm going to go ahead and glue this on. And um, funny thing is this one had already been colored with a marker at some point in time. So whatever I bought it for and didn't use, it was already colored red. So perfect. I did think that there was still something missing um, and I didn't know what to do about that at this point. So I did find a piece of lightweight chipboard in my chipboard stash in my craft room. And I'm just going to use some double-sided tape with my ATG gun and adhere my art journal page down to this chipboard. I actually think this might be a piece of poster board like from the dollar store. So it's a little bit thinner than normal or average poster board. But whatever, it was in my stash, it works. It's kind of gray, but whatever. It doesn't have to always match, I guess. <laughs> so I am going to adhere my art journal page down to this um, chipboard because like I said in the beginning, all of the water did make that paper really flimsy and it um, was not holding itself up very well. I do need to go ahead and trim the chipboard off. So I'm gonna pull out my Fiskars wire trimmer so that I can line that wire up right against the edge of the art journal page and just trim, which is good because I probably did not put this on straight, nor is this piece of chipboard necessarily been cut straight on the other side. So it's good that I have that wire guide to kind of line up with the edge of my art journal page to make sure I get a nice, clean, straight cut. Because, you know, that's my other nemesis, as even with the ruler, I have a hard time with a straight line. I'm just... I'm just flawed. I'm just human. Okay. Um, I still hadn't figured out what I wanted to do with the rest of this art journal page. It did feel a little bit unfinished. Um, you can see my hands tapping on the desk there. I'm kind of thinking what now, what now, what now? I did go ahead and pull my hole punch out and punch a hole in this so I can put it in my binder. I have purchased some A5 size binders from Amazon to hold my art journal pages because I don't like the messy coils in the coil journal books. I did go ahead and put the prompt card on the back of my art journal page. That's just a reminder to me so that I know what I created and why I created it. What was the reasoning behind this page? Because it's a little bit silly. However, my 10 year old thinks it's awesome. He loves the alien and the spaceship because, you know, he's 10. <laughs> I then decided to pull out my Tim Holtz. Um, this is the small talk sticker pad. And I kind of flipped through it and found a phrase that I liked. And it says, let me pull the art journal page out so I get it in the right order. Keep some room in your heart for the unimaginable. I guess it, it works because um, a green alien with tentacles coming down out of the water or the sky with a spaceship without a hatch is a little unimaginable. But also, don't take yourself too seriously. It's okay to... Um, to be silly. Sometimes I forget that, especially as a mom, I forget to just be silly sometimes. So don't worry about it. Be silly sometimes. A little bit of a close up on my funny little sea creature there and his surgically reattached tentacles. Um, I think it's super cute. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I have added a couple of other videos I think you would enjoy as well as a subscribe button. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you did. Leave me a comment, leave me a thumbs up, and I hope you have a really fabulous day.